Hi girls, today we're talking about the woman who honors authority. Pastor Jess here. I'm so glad you joined us for the Women Rock Show today. We have some good things in store for you. We are going to talk about a woman who honors authority. I know the word authority has been like thrown around in our society and it's actually something that God put into place and he redeemed and he restored and he actually set order in it. And so we're going to learn what God says about these things. We here at the Women Rock Show, we are women that just want to know what God says. We want to learn about the things of God. And so this show, we are diving into the word. We're diving into the scripture. We're seeing what God says about us and how to be more like Jesus every day. So welcome and we're going to dive in right now. So go with me. We're going to start in Proverbs 31. We've been doing a series on Proverbs 31. And so if you have missed some of those, you can go back and catch any of those episodes. Okay, we're going to pick up today in Proverbs 31 and we're going to hit the scriptures of 23 and 24. Here we go. Her husband is well known in the city gates where he sits with the civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments and sash to sell to merchants. You go, wait a second, what is those random two scriptures about? Well, guess what? They have so much meaning and there's actually a lot packed into this. Her husband is someone that is very well known in the city. You might be thinking, well, my husband's not well known. He has just his little job and nobody knows who he is. Listen, we're not comparing ourselves. We're learning right now. Okay, so whatever your situation is, that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about this woman and she understands that her husband has authority and that he carries influence and this man is well known. Now let's talk about this with Christ in the church. Jesus is the groom and we are the bride. And so our husband is Jesus, is God himself, the omniscient, the omnipresent God who knows all and sees all. And that means that God carries an authority, that he is well known, that there is an influence and a reputation in which Christ is and carries and he embodies. And so we as his bride, the church, we are responsible for understanding his authority, his position and what he represents. But yet then we being his bride are connected to what it is that God is connected to and that we represent what God represents represents. When we put it on that level, it kind of throws these scriptures into a perspective that is deep and we have to take a responsibility and understand that the authority structure is very healthy and it's God ordained. And so this woman, here she is, she knows that her husband is representing her household. She knows that her husband represents the city, that he's well known, that he has a good name. Well, it's just like Jesus Christ in our lives. He's well known, he has a good name. He carries, he carries consistency and love and grace and mercy. And we, his daughters of the Most High, the saints of Christ, the women that he's called us to be, we know that we carry him everywhere we go. But this also picks up for those that are married. I want to talk to you today if you're married, because so many times we and our marriages maybe don't honor our husbands the way we should. Now listen, this is not to make you feel bad about yourself or think that I am doing this all wrong. We've all messed up in this. In fact, there was a time in a season, I'm going to tell you a story about me and Dan. We were um, we were actually running the young adults ministry and he was the new leader and I was co-leading with him and we would have our team meetings and, and I'm a jokester so like I would always tease and poke at him and, and I never thought anything of it and everybody would laugh and then we'd move on and make our plan for the night and then we'd have church. And one night after church he came home and he was like, hey, you have really been doing this a lot in our meetings and you are disrespecting me. You're actually devaluing the authority that God has given me to be their leader. And this is hurting my feelings because I feel like you see me in this negative sense that you're always teasing me about. And I was shocked because I actually did not mean it the way that he was taking it. But I instantly realized how I had not covered my husband, not actually honored my husband in front of others, not actually carried the authority in which he carries and I'm connected to. I didn't put that into a place of honor and respect and, and uh, an ability to see Christ through him. So right away, I repented to Dan and, and we connected and we, we forgave each other. And then I even went back to the team and I said, hey, I have not been conducting myself right as a leader. And Dan is the leader that God has made him to be and we are coming behind him. And after that, I began to purposely build him up in front of other people. I began to purposely 
honor who it was that God had created him to be. And I came beside him and I honored that. And now it's not something I even think about. We just do it naturally because now we've been 20 years into our marriage. And see, this was something I had to learn. And so this woman understands that her husband is known and that God put something in him that's different than what God put in us. You see, God made men very differently than us. I know the world is trying to say that that's not how it is, but there's characteristics, there's natures, there's senses, there's things that men deal with, weights and pressures and responsibilities that we don't have. And so when we understand our differences, we can step into who it is that God has called us to be. And I believe that we are to be the helpmate, to come alongside and to build up. And this woman knew the authority that her husband carried, and she understood the responsibility that that put on her to carry out their influence of goodness into their community and into the people that they serve. So then let's pick it up in Proverbs 12, 4, because Proverbs 12, 4 talks about this, and it says, a worthy wife is a crown for her husband, but a disgraceful woman is like cancer in the bones. Ooh, the word of God can just kind of hit you. You see, she's one that takes care of all that she has, and she provides for what the needs are. She doesn't miss what is happening around her. This woman is watchful, and she's aware. She knows that she carries an eternal significance, that she is part of something eternal. And so we as women, we are part of this eternal plan of bringing Jesus back, and that he's ready, that his church is being prepared, that our children, our husbands, our homes, our communities, that we have atmosphere and, and trust in that God is going to use us. Proverbs 31, 24 says that she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to merchants. What does that have to do with me? Well, what this is telling me is that she works to change and to build the environment around her. This is a woman that looks for ways to be a blessing, that she is very insightful and she provides for those who her family is assigned to do life with and business with. That means she didn't only take care of her home like we talked about last time, but she also took care of her business place and the people in which there is a responsibility and an authority structure that she's been given. When um, I was reading through the Bible in 2 Samuel, there was this woman called the wise woman. In fact, she does not actually have a name in the Bible. She is called the wise woman, which I think is very appropriate because the Proverbs 31 woman is out of the book of wisdom, and I believe that God is pouring wisdom out on his girls. And so let's, let's pick this story up. I'm going to give you kind of what happened before. But there was this fight going on, and this whole group of people came against King David. And Joab was leading this army to find these people that were trying to revolt against King David and the kingdom. And so they came into the city, and we'll pick it up in 2 Samuel 20, 16 through 22. And I'm actually going to read it out of the voice because I like how it reads like a story in this way. And then it says, this wise woman called out from the city. Okay, so this is just a normal woman. And she says, listen to me. Tell Joab that I want to talk to him. Joab came close enough to hear her. Are you Joab? She said. He said, yes, I am. I am your servant and I have something to tell you. All right, I'm listening, said Joab. The woman said, in the old days, people used to say, let's ask for guidance at Abel. And there, would, there they would resolve their differences. I am one of many in Israel who are faithful and peaceful. Why would you destroy a city that has been a mother to Israel? Why would you knock down what is the eternal one had built? That's good questions. So Joab responds to her in verse 20, and he says, I certainly am not here to destroy the city. Verse 21, that's the last thing I want to do. But we are pursuing a man from a hill of the country, country of Ephraim, Sheba, Bisha's son, who has raised up a rebellion against King David. And if you hand him over to us, then we will lift this siege and we will go home. This was the woman's response. Remember, she's wise. She had to know what was going on, and she had to get in the middle of this. And then she said, then stay alert. We'll throw his head over the wall to you. <laughs> Hold on a second. I mean, she is not just any woman. She's like, we will take care of this. We don't need an army. Let us pull this together because we're going to make this happen. Verse 22, this wise woman talked to all the people about her plan to save the city. They cut off Sheba's head, and then they threw it over the wall to Joab. Then Joab blew the trumpet and halted the attack, and the troops went to their homes, and Joab returned to the king of Jerusalem. You see, this was a woman that said, hold on. I can do this better than what they're doing. They're about to tear our city down. They're about to wreak havoc and cause chaos and confusion, but hold on, because I know that I can do this orderly and well, and she commanded that there was 
order in the situation and she took it into her hand. She was watchful and she was waiting and she was used by God to not bring chaos and confusion, but to bring order and restoration back to the things that the enemy was trying to attack. Listen, you in your life, you are a woman that is on assignment to bring order back into the chaotic moments of your life because you carry the authority of Jesus Christ in you and with you. Your husband is a man of God. Come beside him. Show the world that your marriage is a picture of Christ and the church. You see, girls, we have to ask ourselves some questions. What are some things that I need to readjust maybe in my ideas of my husband, in my marriage? Do I think of my husband as somebody I don't honor or love or see as somebody who has influence or responsibility? I need to change that perspective. And that might be hard because your husband might have done some dumb things. But listen to me for a second. Get into the presence of God and ask God for his heart about your husband. Ask God to begin to build these things in your husband. And for those single girls out there, your husband is Jesus. And he is the gatekeeper. And he is the one that is covering you and building you up. And so ask yourself this question, what am I doing to represent Jesus well? And to bring honor to the authority that he has. And you see, when we put ourselves in a position of being a part of kingdom business as women of the Most High God. God is going to open up the heavens and he's going to use us as a mighty force to do what this wise woman did in her time, in our time. There are things coming against our kids. There are things coming against our society. The world is falling apart, but the goodness and the glory of God is going to shine through you. So go out into the world, make peace with those, bring honor and authority to honor and authority. You see, authority has been torn down by our, our city and our systems and, and our society, but it's the church's responsibility, it's the woman of God's responsibility to understand authority and to display it and to honor it. And when we do that, we will have God on our side and we will be blessed in everything we put our hand to. So that is something that I believe that we can step into this week. So girls, study those scriptures out. Go read the story for yourself. I hope you got something from God today. But before we go, I want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You can't do this on your own. You need him. And knowing Jesus is not just knowing who he is, but to actually have a personal relationship like I would with a friend. God wants to be a part of your life, but you have to invite him in and ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. And that's very simple. He gave us simple instructions, and he said, you just have to invite me in. He's a gentleman. He's not going to berate himself into your heart, but you can invite him in. Well, how do you do that? How do you invite him in? It's very simple. All you do is say a prayer with us. So I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes if you need to rededicate your life or if you want to ask Jesus in your heart for the first time and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Father God, I come before you right now and I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Holy Spirit, fill me and teach me your ways. I pray that today that I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross and for saving me, for washing away my sin and for cleansing me. Today, I leave hell behind and I'm headed for heaven. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Well, yay, I'm so excited for you. Did you know that when one person gets saved, that all of heaven is partying and rejoicing? So this is wonderful and it's exciting. There's a couple things that you need to know. You don't need to do life alone. So if you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you're rededicating, we'd like you to go to www.rockchurch.com and click the Get to Know God button. When you do that, we'll send you some information and we'll give you some um, products so that you don't know what to do next. You will now know what to do. And then also you need to get connected to a local church. If there's a church in your area, if you're not in the San Bernardino area, we'd love for you to come join us if you are. But if you're not, look for a Bible-believing, God-fearing church that just is in love with the things of God and that's going to teach you from the Word of God. Well, I hope you love today. I hope you are blessed by today. And we will see you next time.